was a reenactment of me freaking out over the English subtest of the core subjects EC through six. Why was I freaking out? Because I didn't know what was on the test. So you know what I did? I studied the test and I found out what was on it. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what's on the English subtest of the EC through six so you can be just as prepared as I was. Hi, I'm Scott Roselle, founder of 240 Tutoring, and we provide the best study guides for the core subjects EC through six you're ever gonna find. And I'm making this video for you so you can know exactly what's on this English subtest of the EC through six, the Texas 291, and be prepared the next time you take it. So keep watching, because we're gonna go over the entire test. Now, the English subtest of the core subjects EC through six has 13 different competencies, but it can be neatly divided into five different sections. And those five sections are literacy development, writing, reading comprehension, oral language development, and reading, inquiry, and research. So let's start with the biggest, literacy development. Literacy development is simply promoting a student's literacy development. Essentially, it's teaching students to read. There are three big concepts you definitely have to know to get these questions correct. Assessing developing literacy, the alphabetic principle, and phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is simply the ability to hear and distinguish between the smallest units of sound. And the smallest unit of sound is otherwise known as a Phoneme. And developing phonemic awareness among students is really gonna help them as they learn to sound out words as they're reading. Now, there's a few best practices for teaching phonemic awareness, so you need to make sure that you research and understand what those best practices are. Alphabetic principle is simply the understanding that letters represent sounds, which really represents words. So you have to know strategies to kind of teach and promote students' alphabetic principle and how to connect those dots between the written word and the spoken word. And the last is assessing developing literacy. And there's a lot of ways to assess developing literacy from informal assessments to formal assessments, using criterion referenced assessments or norm referenced assessments. Just know that you'll get multiple questions about how to assess a student's developing literacy and how to incorporate that assessment feedback into instruction. Now, those are the three broad concepts to be familiar with. Right now I'm gonna give you three specific level concepts to be familiar with that are most likely going to appear on the test. The first specific concept is sight words. Words you immediately know and recognize based on sight. When you see them, you know them. There are specific sight words that students need to learn as they're learning to read to give them a much stronger and proficient base in their reading development. So make sure you know these words and how to teach them to students. The second specific concept is decoding skills. Decoding is really the skill of grouping letters together so you can properly pronounce the written word. There are specific best practices skills that elementary students need to learn about decoding. Make sure you know what they are and how to implement those strategies. And finally, as I mentioned just a little bit before, you need to understand what a norm referenced or criterion referenced assessment is. Now, these are two very different types of assessments with different goals and knowing when to use each assessment in the appropriate setting is going to come up on the test. The next concept we're gonna look at is writing. Now, writing's gonna be a little bit more simple, but when you hear simple, don't think easy. You have to know these concepts, even though they're fewer, because they're gonna kinda come up on the test. The first concept you have to know is the stages of writing development. The stages of writing development will go from when a child is first learning to write, scribbling, to when they're starting to use grammar and the finer points of grammar to make their point. The official stages of writing development are scribbling, mock letters, letter formation, word writing, sentence construction, then spelling, and punctuation and grammatical expression. So make sure you're familiar with each stage of the writing development, the characteristics, and what students need to learn, what kind of instructional activities they need to progress on to the next stage. Now, the second concept you need to know is the stages of writing. Didn't this genius just say stages of writing? Pay no attention to my smart aleck self. Stages of writing development and stages of writing are different. Let me explain. The stages of writing are specifically looking at a student who can already write, going from a not completed assignment to a completed assignment. Pre-writing, writing, revision, editing, and publishing. So make sure you know the purposes of each stage and how students should engage in each stage. So what should students be doing during the pre-writing that differs in the writing? And what should students be doing during the revision stage than in the editing stage? All this is almost guaranteed to come up on the test. And if this seems like a lot of information, it's because it is. This is a test that decides if you can be in front and teach the next generation of leaders. But if you're feeling overwhelmed, don't be. Remember at the beginning of the video where I said I was a founder of 242 Dream? 
Well, we've got the best study guides for the English EC through six. So if you're feeling overwhelmed and you don't even know where to begin to figure out how to teach phonemic awareness or how to identify the different characteristics of the stages of writing, we've got you covered. You see, our study guides are filled with hundreds of pages of instructional content and hundreds of authentic practice questions that are gonna walk you through the exact concepts we're talking about in this video in much more depth and detail. And it takes you from knowing what's on the test to knowing what you need to know to be successful on the test to equipping you with that information so that you can be successful when you take this test. So if at any point you're just overwhelmed or you wanna save a lot of time and a lot of headaches, hop over to 240tutoring.com, get the English EC through six study guide and make sure you're prepared today. So let's move on to reading comprehension. This section involves helping a student who can already read better understand what they are reading. And there are three big concepts in this section. The first concept is vocabulary development. Vocabulary development involves specific strategies or activities that enhance a student's vocabulary so they can better understand and read those complex words that they'll come across during their reading. So to get these questions right, you need to know activities and strategies to enhance a student's vocabulary as well as assessments to understand where a student's vocabulary development currently is. The second big concept is promoting a student's reading comprehension. Now, remember, these are elementary students, so we're not gonna teach them how to analyze the finer points of a Charles Dickens character, but rather, we're teaching students to pull out the main idea or to identify critical details in a story. An example of a reading comprehension activity would be for a teacher during a read aloud activity with their elementary students to stop the reading aloud and ask what's the main idea or what are critical themes or details of the story. The third and last concept to be familiar with is the difference between literal, inferential, and evaluative comprehension. Each of these types of comprehension is different, so you need to know the characteristics of each and how to promote students' understanding of each type of comprehension. And finally, as a little bonus, make sure you understand how to measure a student's reading's fluency. You'll get at least one question on the EC36 about how to measure a student's reading fluency, whether informally or in a more formal diagnostic setting. So let's move to the fourth section of the English subtest, oral language development. Oral language is simply promoting a student's oral language skills. And the first concept is really to know the link between oral language skills and reading. The first concept to know is really why oral language is important to reading and reading development. And the reason is, as students begin to sound out words and start to translate written words to spoken words, the stronger their oral language development, the more likely they are to have reading comprehension of what they're currently reading. Because if a student knows a lot of vocabulary words in their oral development, then that's gonna directly transfer to their reading comprehension as they begin to sound out those same words. The second concept to know is the appropriate stages of a student's oral language development. And the goal here is to be able to identify abnormal or slower development of a student's oral language. You see, once you understand a student's typical development of oral language, you'll be able to identify any abnormalities and then intervene earlier in the child's academic career. You see, the goal is to address any developmental issues as early as possible to set the student up for success throughout their academic career. And the third concept is simply strategies to increase a student's oral language development. From students reading aloud activities to class presentations, you need to be familiar with ways to help students expand and improve their oral language skills. And the final concept we're going to cover is reading, inquiry, and research. And this section is really about how to understand the message of an author or publication. So the first big concept to know is how to think critically of the validity of a piece of media. On a simple level, can the source that we're currently looking at be trusted? So you need to understand strategies and activities to help students think critically about the media that they consume. So teaching students how to identify the motive or bias of an author will help them understand how that bias impacts the message that the author is presenting. And really, this specific concept deals with how to judge if a website or any publication should be trusted and how the same event can produce different perspectives from different authors. The second concept is basically teaching students to research. Now, the first concept, we discussed how to choose which sources to trust. This concept's looking much more at how we organize the information that we do take 
and how to properly manage our time. So make sure you're familiar with the best practices of research organization and time management for elementary students. And the third concept is simply teaching students to identify the features of a text. Every text has different features that are designed to quickly and communicate what that text is about. And these features can be things like titles, headers, charts, graphs, maps, indexes, glossaries, and annotations. Teaching students how to navigate these text features and how to leverage these text features to save time or better understand the message of a text is key in getting these questions correct on the core subjects EC through six. And here's a bonus for you. Read the TEKS. TEKS are the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills, and they're the state standard for instruction. On the test, the core subjects EC through six will reference the TEKS, so make sure you give them at least a once over, just so you're familiar with how they're structured and what information they communicate. And remember, if at any point you're feeling overwhelmed by all the studying you have to do, or you don't even know where to start, just hop over to 240tutoring.com, save yourself a lot of time, a lot of headaches, get the best resources bundled together in a simple, online, mobile-friendly, easy-to-use studying solution. And if you have any questions about the EC through six that wasn't covered in this video, make sure to leave a comment. We read over every comment and we respond as fast as we can so that you get your questions answered. And if you liked the video or found it useful, subscribe to our channel, like the video. It's engagement like that that helps us keep producing these videos for future teachers like you.